Hi, and welcome to Bits of Blender. I'm here with my boy Richard. Hi! And I'm going to show you something on object constraints. There was a question on the Blender Artist Forum the other day, and I thought this is another case where it would be easier to show something than to try and write it all out. So, in this case, uh, the user was asking about making like a spider that just had some dangling legs. <laughs> and that's where I thought object constraints would work. So I'm going to make a super simple one for the sake of this bit. Uh, I'm going to start with a cube, and then I'm going to duplicate it, Shift D, and I'm going to move it along the X axis. So I'll say X4, Enter. Then I'm going to scale it. I'm going to hit S, 0.5. Don't have to hit G first before you do like X4. Uh, you know, that's a good question. Because I did Shift D, Shift D, when you go to duplicate, it automatically puts you in the uh, G mode, the Ooh. go. Yeah. So now I'm going to also scale along the X axis four times. And now an important thing here is I'm going to do Control A to apply scale and rotation to the object. I'll show you why that's important later. For now, let's just get it working. Okay, so I've got an object here. This is going to be like the leg. And on the object tag, <laughs> on the object panel, we'll go to the constraints. And I'm going to say rigid body joint. And as soon as I do this, you'll see this is red. This is red because it's saying, hey, you haven't done everything you need to do yet. So I'm going to make that a ball joint. And to object, that's the object that I want it to be uh, kind of like a child to. So this object, if I click on it, you can see that's called cube right there. Oops, didn't mean to do that. And then, uh, so I'm just going to type in cube. And now, let's switch to wireframe. And uh, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And click show pivot. This is the pivot point. So this is what this is going to be doing is this is going to be creating a joint and it's going to be a ball joint kind of like kind of like your shoulder is a ball joint. Ball and socket. Yeah, like a ball and socket. And uh, I'm going to move this pivot point over to here. So that's where it's going to pivot around. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I'm going to do a shift D to duplicate this. I'm just going to drag this over, and notice that uh, since I duplicated it, oh, you know what? Here, let me undo. Undo. Uh, let me do Shift D, and instead of dragging it, notice it's it's all white there. Uh, it's in. It's already like I type G, oh. so I can type X four and uh, hit Enter. And I'm going to go ahead and just move that a little bit more. Notice I used the gesture for that. And here for this guy, I'm going to say the parent is cube 001. Of course, you can rename those. So now, if we move it around, you'll see that its little blue dotted line points to cube 001. So let's try this. I'm going to, just to make it look a little better, I'm going to switch it to uh, textured shading and hit P for play. And nothing happens. That's because you need to make these guys actors. So they're rigid body joints. So what I need to do is click actor so I get these other buttons like dynamic. Click dynamic. Then I get these other buttons like rigid body. <laughs> And now I'll press P for play. Ah. All right, that they're dangling, but really, what's going on here now? Let's hit Z. I hit Z twice, so I could go back to wireframe. See these circles? This is where they're determining their collision, and it's set by this radius. 
So I could either increase these circles or switch the bounds instead of being a, a, a sphere, really. I'm going to switch it to being a box down here. And I'll do that for this one, too. Now notice that this doesn't change. But you'll see that it actually is responding like it's a box for the boundaries. So I'll press P for play. See that? See how they're 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 hitting the edges of the box there? Mm-hmm. And uh, I'll go ahead and press Alt Z to switch back to textured mode. P to play. So the cool thing is, let's go ahead and switch to the top. I'll grab these two. And I'll do a shift D. And then I'll do a shift D. Maybe Oh, I won't, I won't get fancy. I'll just rotate this around. Shift D. And then look at it from the front again. Press play. There we go. That's pretty spider-like. So if it was dangling, maybe make this part a little bit bigger. Except that's only four, right? <laughs> yeah, that's only four legs. That's uh, The remaining four legs is an exercise for the student. So there we go. We got like nice dangling legs. Now, one thing I promised to show you is why scale and rot rotation is important to apply that before. So get your beforehand. So uh, I'm selecting all these, and let's say, gosh, I really want that spider to be smaller. So I hit S for scale, 0.25, enter. It's like, oh, that's cool. That's the right size. And then I press P for play. <laughs> well, what the heck's I think happening? I legs are breaking off. <laughs> so, well, let's switch to wireframe. Oh. No, it's not what you think, oh. uh, actually. See, look at these pivot points. Yeah. They're not pivoting on the pivot points. So what really happened is if I go apply scale and rotation right now, we'll see the pivot points where they really are. So when I press, like for example, this guy's pivot point is here, uh, it's going to pivot down like this, which is exactly what it was doing. So watch. See that? Yeah. So that's why you apply scale and rotation first. Otherwise, you have to go back and readjust all your pivot points. Yeah. You can always make it and a real well, cool well, spider with eight legs <laughs> and with a head and everything. It doesn't have to be this simple. It's just a bit. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Richard wants me to obviously do something more realistic than this. But this is a QB spider. So, there you go. We'll name it QB. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye.